Thank you. Everybody put your hands out like this. Point your thumbs down. Cross your arms. And interlock your fingers like this. Make sure your thumbs are pointed down. Make sure your neighbor's thumbs are pointed straight down. Hey, get ready for the next move. You ready? Say yeah. yeah. Do this. <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. I like to start my program with that little demonstration because it illustrates a point. Why was I able to raise my thumbs and you weren't? Uh, not because I'm double jointed, but because I acted slightly different than you did. And I did. I'll show you exactly what I did in a little while. But the point is, sometimes the smallest shift in our behavior makes all the difference in the world. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would our organization bring in a therapist, a mentalist, an entertainer to speak with us here today? It's because of one simple truth. A truth that I discovered through both tragedy and celebration. Uh, a truth that works in good times and in bad times. A truth that remains constant, whether you're a skid row bum or a Wall Street tycoon. And that truth is your mind will make you or it'll break you. Your mind will make you or it'll break you. See, I truly believe that the quality of our lives is in direct proportion to the quality of our thinking. Now, let me ask everybody here something. If you believe in mind reading, raise your hand. A uh, few of you. I don't personally. Uh, if you believe in psychic powers, raise your hand. A couple of you do. Oh, here's a good one. If you believe in a phenomenon known as deja vu, raise your hand. Everybody does. Here's another good one. If you believe in a phenomenon known as deja vu, raise your hand. <laughs> if you believe in telekinesis, raise my hand. Uh, I'm going to choose somebody near the front. Lady right through there. Yeah, looking to her right. Oh, yeah, yeah, stand up for us. Perfect. Give her a round of applause. All right, if we get a mic under your mouth, yes, stay standing on your feet. All right. Uh, your first name is? Renee. Renee. Mm -hmm. That's correct. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, do me a favor. I want you to think of a number between 1 and 100. Done. You've got it? Okay, now, uh, don't think of the number 7. Okay, you weren't, were you? No. Okay, good, because that's a commonly thought of number. I don't want you to think I'm playing the odds here. Uh, as you think of this number, Renee, be very careful not to give me any nonverbal indicators. Okay, what I mean by that is, uh, don't move your mouth when you're thinking of it. A lot of people will give me a nonverbal indicator. I was doing this for a woman in Ohio a while ago. I said, think of a number between 1 and 100. She went like this, no kidding. 35. <laughs> I said, is it 35? She said, how could you know? All right, so Renee, you've got a number in your mind. I can't know this number, correct? Uh, no. <laughs> no. You shouldn't be able to anyway. You and I have never met. Correct. Correct. All right. I'm going to write a prediction here. And is that Renee? Buckley. Okay. Well, I was looking, checking for the spelling of Renee, actually. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for the last name. Uh, R-E-N-E? <laughs> Two E's. Two E's. Okay. Uh, Renee will think of the number. Do you want me to tell you? Not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. I've committed myself, Renee. Uh, in a big, loud voice, name the number you thought of. Before, oh, right now? Yeah. <laughs> 99. 99. Nine. Hold out your right hand for me. <laughs> Let's pass this back to Renee face down. Uh, okay. I'll reach over <laughs> for you. Yeah, it. pass it back to her. Don't turn it over yet. Let's recap what just happened. Uh, Renee just thought of a number between 1 and 100. I shouldn't have been able to know this number or anybody else here. Renee, turn over the pad and in a clear voice read everything that I wrote. Renee will think of the number 99. Give her a big round of applause. Too often we play the negative aspects of our minds over and over and over like a bad TV show. 
Can you imagine if you had to watch bad TV for 24 hours straight, how that would get on your nerves? The point is we would never voluntarily watch something on TV we didn't want to watch. So why do we voluntarily watch the worst episodes of our lives in our mind? When we watch the, the worst episodes, bad reruns of our worries, our dislikes, and our failures, eventually we start to carry them with us. But the good news is this. The good news is that when we focus on what's good, on what's stable, and what's exciting in our lives, something magical happens. We don't see it, but it happens anyway. Roadblocks start to disappear in our lives. When we focus on what's positive, other people just sense it. They want to know what we're doing. They want some of it. Hey, they want to hear, they want to be on our team. They want to buy what we're selling. Hey, they want to hear what we have to say. Our focus is like a magnifying glass. And whatever is under that magnifying glass gets bigger, clearer, and more realistic. Of all the different things I talk about in my keynote, if there's only one thing I could say, it would be this. To implement the law of expectations into your life. What is the law of expectations? The law of expectations tells us that whatever we expect with confidence becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in our own lives. If we expect great things to happen, they usually will. If we expect the bad things to happen, they usually will. The law of expectations also tells us that a person rarely achieves more than he or she expects to achieve. If you want greatness, if you want change, if you want to thrive, if you want to kick it to the next level, expect to do so. James Allen, uh, the late James Allen, is the author of a great book, which I recommend everybody read, and it's actually a free download online, so you can find it online. It's called As a Man Thinketh, T-H on the end, written by James Allen, As a Man Thinketh, and he says in the book, words to live by, the visions that you glorify in your mind, the ideas you hold close to your heart, this you will build your life upon, this you will become. The visions you glorify in your mind, the ideas you hold close to your heart, this you will build your life upon, this you will become. You know, in traveling, in traveling around the country, uh, I have a lot of downtime. And so I get to think a lot. And one day I thought, what would our brain say if our brain could actually speak to us? If it could pop out of our head, turn around and look us in the eye, what would it say? I believe it would say something like this. You and I are constant companions. I can be your best friend or your worst enemy. I can lead you to your greatest achievements or I can drag you down to your darkest failures. The choice is yours. I can be run for profit or for ruin. Doesn't make a difference to me. Train me, mold me, direct me, be firm with me, and I'll lay the world at your feet. Go easy on me and I'll ruin you. When you run your mind, when you expect great things to happen, Things that you once thought were impossible can actually start to happen right in front of your face. I'm going to be pulling cards out as well, saying, is this your card? Is this your card? I'm going to try and beat you to it. Are you ready? Sure. Am I going to have them? Yeah, you're going to have them. You're standing right beside me. Okay? Uh, your hands are straight out like this. You get the cards. You start at the count of three. Yeah, take them in your hands. Okay? One, two, three, and go as quick as you possibly can there, David. Give me a chance, though. Okay? Is that it right there? Keep going through there. Hey, don't go past it. A lot of people get excited to go right by it. Okay, uh, right here, David, is that it? No. No, keep going through there. <laughs> right here, I got it, right here. Seriously, no? Hey, don't go past it, get all excited. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Give a big round of applause. Right here. Huh? Your first name is? Travis. Travis, thanks for coming up, Travis. Travis, pack of cards for you here. Put those in your pocket. This microphone is for you, so please speak into it. Uh, who have you got on the phone, Travis? Uh, my mom. Your mom? Where's your mom? She is in the home office building. She's in the home office building, so not too far from here. No. Okay, good. Travis has got his mom on the line, is, so she's at work? Yeah. Deck of You're cards work, nearby? Right? You're not at work? <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Are you busy? You're not doing anything, right? Okay. Okay, we're playing a game. Hang on. You at work? Yeah, She's doing okay. anything? No. Okay, so any chance your mother's got a pack of cards nearby? If not, no big deal. Mom, do you have cards right now? Yeah, no. no. 
Good, okay. All right. So let's, let's, we're going to play a game of imagination with your mother here. Uh, have your mother imagine that she's got a pack of cards in front of her. Okay, pretend you have a deck of cards in front of you. Yeah, okay, she's got it. Have her shuffle the cards. Shuffle them. <laughs> she's got them shuffled. Tell her to take them out of the box first. Take, take them out of the box first. <laughs> take them out of the box first? Oh, oh yeah, she does. Okay. Yeah, have your mother spread those cards out in front of her so they're all face up. Spread them all out so they're all face up. Check. Okay. Now, ask your mother if there's any jokers in the deck. Is there any jokers? She took them out. Okay, good. <laughs> now, let's have your mother look at one card. Look at one card. Got it? She's got one? Yeah. Ask her quickly if she's looking at the ace of spades. Are you looking at the ace of spades? No. Good. That's not my guess. Good. Hey, the reason I ask that, if you ask any person to look at a card, think of a card, or choose a card from a face-up deck, one in four people will go to that ace of spades, just because it's got the great big spade on it. It's a popular card. Second most popular choice, and this is where the, where the popular choices end, second most popular choice, only among females, is the queen of hearts. Ask her if she's looking at the queen of hearts. Are you looking at the queen of hearts? No. Good. So this is a completely random card. Totally random card, right? Totally random. All right. She's got a fictitious deck of cards laid out in front of her. Have her take this card that she looked at out of the deck. Take the pretend card out of the deck. Take the pretend card out of the deck. Yeah, yeah, okay. Turn it so it's face down. Turn it so it's face down. Okay. Put it back inside the deck. Put it back inside the deck. Close the deck back up into one pile. Close it back up into one pile. Okay. And put the cards back in the imaginary and box. And put them back in the box. Done. Good. Let's recap what just happened. Travis has called his mother. Fictitious pack of cards. His mom is uh, using her imagination. She's pretended to look at a card in an imaginary deck. She's taken this card out, turned it face down, put it back in, closed it back into one pile, put the cards back in the box. Check. I give you a pack of cards before we started this whole thing. In this deck, I reversed one card. Would it be cool if it's the same one your mother reversed in hers? For the first time, have your mother name the card. Okay, tell me what the card is. Okay. Name it out loud for us. Three of diamonds. Positive. Yeah, positive. It's a three of diamonds. You didn't change it halfway through because it's going to mess up the trick. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Travis. No problem. Glad to have you here, buddy. <laughs> So the card was the... Three of diamonds. Three of diamonds. Watch. i do this on my fingertips. One card is face down the deck. There it is right there. Take it out. Look at it. Show it to everybody. It's the three of diamonds. Thank you, Travis. Big round of applause for Travis.